Hi there, I'm Danny Sloan. I'm a technical trainer with the Utah Education Network and welcome to another episode of UEN PD TV. Today, I'm here with the amazing Michelle Reed. She is a library and media educational technology specialist, right. a very special specialist, <laughs> a lot of words to describe her. Yes. But we're here because she has some incredible students doing some incredible things with her makerspace. True? True. All right, so tell me a little bit about your makerspace philosophy. We know that there are a lot of teachers and librarians who want a makerspace, but it's it's kind of a lot of work. It really is, it is. And so that's why, so I came into this library, mm -hmm. this is my fourth year here, and the library, it's like literally in the center of the school, but nobody came into it. So I knew I needed something to make kids come into the library. Okay. And books are awesome. Yeah. Right, but not all kids think the books are awesome. So I wanted to do Makerspace and I was so overwhelmed my first year here um, with everything that I needed to do. I just kept having this Makerspace that I'm like, Makerspace, Makerspace, Makerspace. And I knew I needed help. And the only people that could help me were the students. Yeah. So <laughs> there's I, not tons of money to hire right, Makerspace aid. Exactly, I needed a Makerspace aid and I decided to get the students. Um, to do it. So I gave it a try. I trained the students and they run, like they really literally run with it. Yeah, I exactly. wanted a space where students could um, just create and make and explore and do something else during lunch because there's not a playground at middle school. Right. And that's actually kind of hard for seventh graders. So I needed a space for that and I needed help. Awesome. And that's where I got my students. So your students come in, they take over control. How do you feel about that? <laughs> was it hard at first? It was hard at first. This I will give you that. Space, you can be honest. <laughs> I will give you that. It was very hard at first. I was kind of like leery, especially because we got a lot of money. Mm -hmm. I a mean, a lot of money invested in like robots and that's what they really liked. And I didn't really know what to do with them. Um, making the students. So yes, it is scary. But too. has it been okay? But it has been amazing. They have exceeded my expectations. Fabulous. Completely exceeded my expectations. So this PDTV is going to be a lot about the students, how they're making this makerspace work. So why don't we go check out and talk to the students about how they're doing it? Perfect. Uh, hello, my name is Chase. This is Mikkel. And we're going to show you makerspace. So this is makerspace. Um, this is where we check out different items uh, that uh, during lunch kids can come and check them out, play around with them in the library, and then they return them to us. We, we're here all during lunch. We get to leave third period early to come down, and we kind of do whatever. It, it's just really fun down here. <laughs> uh, we have our different uh, stations here. So uh, this this is our uh, duct tape station. Then uh, over here we have a few, you know, stuff. We have markers. We have more supplies. Um, then we have games. Liam, will you talk about the games oh, a little yeah. bit? So these games are just little things that we can do in a bit of time, like uh, chess. And we can check out puzzles like uh, Rubik's Cubes, just games like Exploding Kittens and Code Names, just stuff like that. Yeah, uh, then we have our robots. See, we have a few spheros. Uh, in a way, will you explain those a bit more? Sure. Um, we have a lot of robots, and people, when they think of Makerspace, most of the time, they come and check out the robots because I think it's what they love the most, and we have a lot of them. We try to have different ones, have a whole drawer about just robots. And we try to do challenges with them. And if they do challenges, they get more reward, rewards. And it's a lot of fun. And then over here, we have our iconic Lego wall. This was just set up this year, and this was brand new. And Jared, do you want to talk about that? So we got, Le so we got Le Lego. They can just come here and just build on the wall whatever they want. At the end of the day, we at the end of the week we come and take everything down. We got cube planks, linking logs, and uh, and connects. And so that's it. Yeah. Uh, then we have a 
our wall over here that we can we have people they can come and draw on it um pretty much the same rules as our like a wall nothing inappropriate or mm -hmm. Whatever, and then they can just draw that we have all our supplies in this bin right here. And then at the end of the week, we erase it and replace it with our Welcome to Makerspace sign. Mm -hmm. uh, we also, uh, to check out, we have just a Chromebook. Um, originally, we just had this little keypad. Uh, they put in their nine number, and then uh, recently, we just got this checkout and we have these boxes with the the code and stuff. The, the yeah. sort of the the barcode for yeah, bar each code. of the I items. So they mm -hmm. type in their student ID, they tell us what they want, we scan the barcode, whether it's on the item or on a box, because with the robots you can't have yeah. the barcode on it. And then they just get a habit for the rest of the lunch. Yeah. Right now we are doing a Tri Wizard tournament where we are currently having activities for the kids to do throughout lunch. Right now we are on our second stage, but in our first stage we painted once. That was the main building ex experiment. We painted ones like this and this, which was really fun. And then we also had a scavenger hunt where they, at the end of it, they could find dragon eggs, which are bath bombs with dragons in them. and. Um, but right now we are currently doing Minute to Win It games and we were also doing a Just Dance U-Ball uh, during this last week and um, it ended up being a great success. Um, so right now we are, going, we are building the last stage which is going to be a maze for the Spheros to go through and at the end they will encounter Voldemort which is just a giant RTD2. Uh, the students are currently building the entire thing and it's been a great experience for us. So normally during the lunch period you go and you get your lunch, you sit down and you can talk with friends for an hour, you can go and do pretty much whatever. But when we're in Makerspace we have to leave our the third period class or second period for our first lunch team. Uh, I think five, 10 minutes early and come down and set up so that you can, you can be the first to get lunch and run straight back in here to um, check things out all day. Uh, before I joined Makerspace, I was usually just in here anyways. I, I go sit on the chair and I just read. Uh, I never really went into Makerspace much either. So once, once I joined, I was like, man, this is pretty fun. Like. Yeah, you, you do leave behind some stuff, but it's worth it. When we're coming up with these big challenges, like right now we're in the middle of our huge month-long Triwizard Tournament, it's you're definitely working, you're the creative part of your brain, really hard to think of what would be fun, how can we get it to work, what's the cheapest way we can do it, and what so, sort of rewards can we get. So you're definitely being very creative, you're getting gaining expertise in all of like, the craft stuff, you're learning how to do robots, you're learning how to build with Lincoln Logs and Kiva Planks. So you're learning all these different aspects of engineering and art stuff and all sorts of stuff. And you're also, yeah, you're talking to lots of people, you're learning to be a leader and get work done and just be social. And it's, you're kind of learning stuff in all the different areas that will definitely help you with a job later on. Uh, especially if you're in sort of like a leadership a leadership position. The hats we have, they're, <laughs> they're kind of crazy. They really stand out. So uh, they kind of, the tradition sort of started with last year's Makerspace. They decided we need someone, we need to be able, people need to be able to recognize who we are, that we are Makerspace experts, that we can answer their questions, we can check out their robots and stuff. And so they went on Amazon and they found this, I don't know, it was just a box and it was supposed to come with a bunch of random hats. They got it, they opened it up, and these things were in there. There's a, just a ton, bunch of completely random, completely ridiculous hats. And so they kind of let people know 
that they're, if we're the makerspace experts. If they have questions, they can come talk to us. If they want to do a challenge, come talk to us. It's kind of just says, come and talk to me, <laughs> pretty much. We also have these awesome lights around our door. And we usually need a few minutes to get ready before students start coming in. So um, we turn on the lights so they know like when to come in and that we're ready for them. Uh, we got them from a school who was just giving them away and we're like, we'll take them. <laughs> and yeah, that's where we got them. My advice for teachers is kind of let the students go. Um, Sort of just let them go, really. Yeah, that's all there is. And I mean, if they're if they're doing like bad stuff, you can kind of come back and like grasp them and say, just you need to stop that. And you can kick them off Makerspace if you need to, if it comes to it. But yeah. And if you're not even if you're like running a Makerspace, if you're teaching your class, I think it's important to keep things very hands-on almost because if you just pop them down with a worksheet they're they're not really going to be that interested but if you're making them interact with others or you're giving them a ton of random materials toothpicks glue straws and we say um, build a tower that stands up on its own build a house for a family do pretty much whatever give them kind of let them come up with their own ideas and yeah, just make sure everything is very hands-on and interactive so they can be very creative while still learning. Those students are incredible. Right. They really are leaders here at the school and with your makerspace. So thank you for having us, but could you give a tip for a new teacher librarian who maybe wants to do something like this in their own space? So my biggest tip is just start. Just do it. We started with like three robots and then we just gathered stuff from everywhere. We got stuff from, uh, we had people donate stuff. We found stuff around the school. Literally, like anytime anyone's throwing anything out in the school, they always come and ask me if I want it. Um, That's perfect. So just start. And even if it's small, like what we have now is amazing, but it did not start this way. I will tell you that for sure. <laughs> and it didn't happen overnight. It did not happen overnight. <laughs> so just start and just run with it and work through the problems as you go. That's what we've done and that's what's made us successful is just just try it and start small. Even if it's just one little thing, just try it. All right, great advice from Michelle. Thank you. Well, that's another episode of UENPD TV. Thanks for joining us. If you'd like to register for one of our free PD classes, go to uen.org slash register. Now, just so you know, we have a Makerspace class and we'd love to see you there. Thanks.